this is just North frequency from Saudi Arabia. And we just came out with uh, our AP. It's called Horrid Dirge. I was just like everyone who's listening to this album of this AP to really enjoy it. I enjoy the noise coming out of this album, really. Hey, you are listening to the Brutally Delicious Podcast. I am Bruce. And this is Rina from Silentium, who is guest hosting this awesome episode. She's doing a better job than Bruce, too. This... Yeah, she's rolling, she's rolling her R's, though. I wish I could do can that. I, can, I, can, I get, can I get my, my intro in, or are you just going to walk all over me? <laughs> We're going to walk all over you. <laughs> everyone, knows, everyone knows who I am, so whatever. Yeah, yeah and that's your kink, though, Chris, isn't it? Like, yeah, yeah. He- but- Walking all over you. Yeah. But you're is. not Mr. Soda Can, so we'll leave it at that. Oh, dude, no, I'm definitely not. I have a phobia about being naked in front of other men because of it. But anyways, so <laughs> <laughs> I've always wa- I've been wanting to do this. So there's this morning show that happens in DC called Elliot in the Morning. Yeah. And I listen to him here. He was born in Canada, so he's a Canadian, but he's really an American. He has a harsh American accent. And uh so, like, whenever someone calls, he's like, Ellie in the morning. And then the guy's <laughs> like, hello, is it me? And he goes, who's the ass? <laughs> I, just had to, I just had to do that. Okay. Uh, that, that was great. So now that you got that out of your system, yeah. today we're going to be talking with a band called Death Noise Frequency from Saudi Arabia. And I've never spoken to anybody in the music business from Saudi Arabia, so this should be kind of cool. Yeah, it's interesting. I've never, I didn't know. Yeah. And, and I've had some difficulty finding some stuff online, so we'll just go ahead. We're going to be speaking with Ahmed, and we'll go to him on the line and see what he's got to say. Okay. I got a lot of, I got a lot of questions, so. Yeah. Dun, 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 One of the dun, coolest dun, dun, ones we did was with those guys from South Africa. That was like, oh, the, yeah. remember we were like half hour behind on every interview after that? <laughs> yeah. They were great. They've been talking to us lately a lot. Yeah, yeah. Which- Hello. Facing the Gallows. Well, Facing the Gallows. Yeah, I'm, I'm familiar with their music. Very great band, a great interview. It was really cool. Yeah. yeah. Of course, the Salenti interview was really good, too. That was probably <laughs> the best interview, which is why oh, no. we asked you. <laughs> Ahmed, are you there? Didn't add him. All right, let's try it again. <laughs> yeah, that is probably why we asked you, because mm. we got off the phone. We're like, we got to get her to, uh, to guest here, because that was too fun. Too great. Yeah, it was a good interview. My goal is to make me like a permanent fixture in this like I'll be super offended if I don't become like a. Actual- oh, if we don't ask you back again. Yeah, we like, talked about making beginning. it like a morning show on the radio where there's like, you know, three people around the, the the table doing the podcast, and Bruce was like, "Well, what would your role be?" I said, "Well, obviously, I'm the leader." <laughs> <laughs> Bruce does. I'm there just for the boobs. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Bruce, have you added them in? Bruce? I, he, he thought, like, you know, the I, boobs was too much for him. Yeah, he's like, that's it. Speechless. That's, done. That's it. Done. My wife won't allow me to do this podcast. I'm out. <laughs> <laughs> Bruce, what the fuck did he do? I don't know. Should I even be recording right now? I don't know. It, it, there's like this pause button on Bruce's ball <laughs> <laughs> there's been a pause but pause button on bruce's balls for a while <laughs> hey are you there hey how's that pause hey. button on your balls doing that's great hang on i think we amad are you here uh, yeah we're, we're uh, us three are here we're missing so, somehow he called me and then when i answered it it fucked everything up all right okay. hang on let me see if i can get him back right hey amad Hey, Ahmad, how are you? How are you? Great. How are you? My, my partner, Chris, and we have a guest host today, Rena, all the way from Finland. Say hello, everyone. Hello. Hey, Ahmed, how are you doing? I'm great. Can, can, can you hear me well? Because I'm not sure if my voice is clear enough. Is that enough? It's great, man. Yeah, yeah. All right, that's great. That's great. So I'm, I'm going to go right off the bat. Thank you for joining us first, but I never heard of extreme metal from saudi arabia is there a scene down there 
Yeah, if there's a metal scene in Saudi Arabia, yes, there's a metal scene in Saudi Arabia, but it's so underground metal scene. So yeah, I mean, not a lot of bands coming out to 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 the globe. I mean, people not really hearing much often about the Saudi metal bands, but yes, there are Saudi metal bands. Yeah, if if, if this is the answer to the question. Okay. Any, any bands with with females in them as well? No, I mean, and uh, metal. No, I mean, there's no females, um, as as per my knowledge. I mean, uh, no, they are not really associating with metal here in Saudi Arabia. No, you can't find a metal band with a Saudi with a, with a female. No, not not really. Okay. Do, do you think there should be? Yeah, of course. I mean, uh, yeah, why not? I mean, I mean, we are open for this. I mean, the country is open. Yeah, the people are open to it. But uh, for some reasons, probably they're not into metal really maybe i have i've no i mean i have no particular answer for this question right yeah. but yeah maybe in the future they will come out maybe uh i don't know really <laughs> i was yeah. this great i was looking for some of your music online i couldn't find any how can we find your music uh so for, for which uh this noise frequency yes yeah, I mean it's on YouTube. It's on Spotify. I not Spotify. I, I I don't like Spotify. So it's it's in YouTube. Uh, it's in uh, Tidal, I believe. It's um, Deezer. I don't know. This this uh, platforms. It's a music platform. Yes, you can find it over this. Death noise frequency, and it's is it one word or? Yeah, it's, it's one word. Yes. Ah, that's if why. Yes, if you didn't find it, probably you have to look. Uh, just say uh, horrid, uh, horrid. Found bears. it. The yeah, I got it. The, yeah, lamenting dirge. Okay, one second, yes. one second. I'm going to play the first couple seconds of it, Art. I, I can't yeah. share it. I wish I could, but I'm just going to listen to a few bit, a second of it. You so, still there? <laughs> still there? <laughs> yeah. All right, so while he's listening. Oh, man, this is weird. Oh, yeah. <laughs> this is the weirdest, like... The reaction podcast ever like hey, yeah, yeah. but it, it's kind of doom metal <laughs> it, are you do you guys classify yourself as doom metal or no i mean i mean uh basically no it's not doom metal i mean uh but it, i mean apparently people are calling it doom metal at the moment and i have no idea why it is dark but it's not doom so if, if i want to say it's let's say it's experimental noise metal thing yeah it's experimental metal but it's not doom doom really um, no, but yeah, because it's it's a dark, it's a little bit. Uh, you, you have some horror elements. Uh, the lyrics a little bit depressed, you know, depressing something like this. So yeah, people say people are calling it doom, but it's not doom. Maybe it's slow, a little bit slow. So yeah, but it's not doom. It's not doom. No. What what would you call it then? Experimental um, noise metal. Experimental noise metal. I love that. It's, it's yeah, a whole new right. genre. I've never heard of this genre. This yeah. is great. How, <laughs> I, um, how, how do you go? How did you get into heavy metal? I mean, I mean, we've been listening to this since like yeah, to twenty five years, maybe. I mean, listening to metal. I mean, uh, my darling bride, Anathema, Paradise oh, Lost. Uh, so good. Uh, yeah, I mean, not Metallica, but yeah, I mean, some some of the band members they used to love Metallica a lot, and I was more into this Doom side with My Dying Bride and Nothing Mind, Paradise Lost, Morning Beloved, uh, you know, uh, Candle Mass, uh, you know, uh, Celtic Frost, Obituary, Morbid Angel, Death, this kind of bands, and then we started like, but I mean, this noise frequency is, is, is it's not an old band, so it just only started 2016. But we have a doom death band called Grieving Age. This is where the thing started. So I have another project. It's called the Grieving Age. It's a doom death band, and then we decided later on to experiment more with the sound. So me and the guitarist of Grieving Age, we decided to create another band called This Noise Frequency which we're experimenting with the noise and sound. So what are your goals for the band? Sorry? Uh, what are your goals for the band? What's like the best case scenario that you could come up with to happen? I, mean, I don't know. I mean, what would I put the best case scenario, to be honest? I mean, we're just doing it because we're loving, we're loving this sound. We want to experiment with this sound, with these elements of the noise. That's all. But I, I wouldn't plan really to take it so far. But if, if it went... And it happened, then it happened. I would love to really, but yeah, if, if you say something, I would love to play live shows out in Europe and America, maybe I would say that'd be great. And this band to be known 
for people who are really interested in this kind of sound. That's it. That's yeah. awesome. So it's purely for the passion. What are I, I know right now you probably can't do live shows, but what what's the live show like for you guys? Yeah, I was wondering the same thing. I mean, we have we have never done a live show before, to be honest. Okay. And I mean, yeah, we never we never had a chance to. I mean, we. Um, so I have no idea if we're gonna do a live show. How how it would be the live show? But it's all. I mean, what what, what we always we sit together and we imagining we're playing a live show. It's gonna be real dark. I mean, probably it's in it like a, a, a total dark things, and there's a, like a chaotic lights here and there, and you know. Uh, I don't know, but it's, it's something crazy, something not not uh, not normal. Something do you not, not normal. Do you not play live because there's no venues to play, or just because you guys are just writing no, all the time? No, no, because we, we didn't find uh, we, we didn't really uh, get a chance to play live. I mean, we're not seeking to play live because I mean, we we usually are kind of busy. I mean, we are doing it like just like something a hobby. We would love to play from time to time. But we're not really doing it for, for, for any, anything. I mean, we, we're not planning to do a live show even. I mean, if something came, then that's great. If it didn't come, we're not, we're not looking after uh, to, to play live shows. I mean, we're usually busy with our daily jobs. So we don't have much time really to, to practice even or to be together only from time to time. Cool. So what's your day job? Uh, so I work in a pharmaceutical business. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. So... Well, yeah, I mean, yeah, it's nice. Even, even my, 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 I mean, uh, the guitarist who's um, in this construction, so he's still working in a pharmaceutical business. Oh, so, I mean, right. uh, it's, it's, it's pretty busy and occupied thing. So, yeah, yeah. But, I mean, whenever we have time, we, we just go and play together, try to create something. Cool. Hey, Bruce, why are you grunting over there? What? You're grunting. Sorry? What the hell's going on? Uh, <laughs> I have no idea. I didn't know I was doing that. Are you pulling a song, Gray, or what? Yeah. Oh my God. <laughs> That's for another day. Yeah. Anyway, I mean, yeah. I, I know yeah. you said you don't play out, but are there places, because forgive me for not knowing much about Saudi Arabia, but I imagine that there's, from my opinion anyway, or my perception, there's not many places to play, especially since uh, alcohol is kind of restricted as well, right? Is it, or is that my perception of it? Is it different? I mean, I mean, the alcohol, the alcohol differently. I mean, it's, it's, it's not in Saudi. I mean, you cannot have alcohol, yes. But it doesn't have to do anything with the live shows because live shows at the moment, it's 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 there. We have a lot of bands are playing, not all of bands, let's say, but we have bands playing, we have musicians are coming in. Uh, last year, we have um, a big festival called Middle Beast, and it was amazing. You have a lot of, you know, trans house musicians come in. David Guetta, uh, I don't okay. know, Black, Black Eyed Peas. They came and they performed live. And it was the biggest. It was three days festival in Saudi Arabia. So, yeah, festivals are there. Music is alive. Uh, people are enjoying it at the moment. Everyone is doing their best to do live shows. Uh, but when it comes to metal, it's not that yet, not that popular in Saudi Arabia. So that's why the live shows is, 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 is not that many. I mean, you can't just do live shows and just expecting 10 people to show up. I mean, right. so it's not that practical. So yeah, I mean, probably in, in two years from now, when, 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 when I mean, metal became a little bit popular, so probably, yeah, we can do live shows back then. But it's not, like, it's not like it's frowned upon that metal isn't like allowed or anything, because I remember like a few years back, uh, Follow the Sun is like they're my friends and so on. So like I remember they they went uh, Dubai, I think. So, they went to Dubai. Yeah, exactly. And they yeah. were just banned from coming. And I think it then happened at a later time, and they tried again, and it did happen. But it was yeah. definitely like blocked by the state saying that. That's correct. Uh, in, in this, in this case, particular, yeah, I understand. But in this case, particularly, I have no. I don't know the background of the things, but at the same time, I mean, they banned Swallow the Sun, but at the same time, Kratoni, they played. Immolation, they played. So, um, oh, okay, that's good. Uh, yeah, exactly. So I, I don't know what the, really the story behind Swallow the Sun, why they didn't play. I don't think because of the lyrics, differently, or their music, because Kratoni is still doing heavy. Immolation is, is, is a death metal thing. So right. I don't, I have no idea what's really stopped um, Swallow the Sun of playing it. I have no idea, to be honest. Right. But right. I mean, in Dubai, everything is open. You can play live shows. I attended a lot. Aero Maiden been there. Megadeth has been there. So yeah, I guess it's okay. Yeah. Okay. But, but here, I, I mean, Saudi Arabia, I'm sure probably in, in a year from now, 
two years from now, we're going to have these big bands coming in when there's a demand on them. But at the moment, it's still, I mean, we, the, the, the metal community here, people listen to metal, there are not many. So probably in a year or two, yeah, you're going to have it. I believe so. Gotcha. Cool. That's interesting. That's definitely yeah. different from my perception for sure. Yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, I mean, I, I totally understand that. I know people. I mean, saying Saudi Arabia, you can't play music or anything. No, it is not. You can't play music. You can enjoy music. You can do everything that you want. And we have a lot of emerging artists coming out from Saudi Arabia. Yeah, it's not metal, but they have an indie rock, indie pop music, indie electronic things. Uh, cool stuff is happening. But yeah, I mean, uh, gradually it's, it's going up. See, gotcha. that's what this podcast is all about: is learning, yeah. learning to break barriers. Exactly. This is really interesting. I think it's very important to sort of show yes, yes, wrong yes. perceptions. And I would love to invite you one day to Saudi Arabia. Come and see it yourself. I mean, you can enjoy it a lot. It's a beautiful place. Yeah, it does look like one. Absolutely. What is the, uh, what's the virus like over there? Are you guys still rampant in the uh, pandemic or is it kind of letting up? I mean, no. I mean, I mean no. I mean, uh, things are cool now at the moment. I mean, we are out. Uh, everything is pretty normal, not very normal. It's pretty normal. I mean, um, I mean, we we cannot travel yet. I mean, um, travel is banned still, uh, but everything else is is, is okay. I mean, um, yeah, I mean, okay. You have to wear your mask differently sure. all the time outside. Yeah, but things are cool. I mean, the numbers are going down. Uh, people are start, you know, getting, being less afraid of uh, Corona. Yeah, I mean, but we, you have to be cautious about it. That's it. Oh yeah, absolutely. I agree. Yeah, Chris? yeah. Did did yeah. You, did you know that people from the United States can't travel either? Yeah, of course. Yes. Yeah, they're banned <laughs> from traveling. It's right. crazy. Yeah, I mean, even thing. in our own states. It's, yeah, it's and this thing. year, this year is unique, uh, uniquely different. I mean, it's weird what's happening to the world at the moment. I don't know what's happening. Kind of lame. Twenty twenty is a weird year. It is, yeah. I like to it say is, yeah. fuck 2020. Fuck <laughs> <laughs> 2020. Absolutely, 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 yes. <laughs> and I guess if you guys aren't playing live, so it's not like this has affected your touring or anything like that. No, but- no at all, at all, no. I mean, I mean we, have, we have released this EP during our quarantine thing, so it was pretty cool to working on us during the quarantine probably if no quarantine we didn't work in this thing because we had the time to set we had the time to be at our home writing and thinking and brainstorming so yeah if if, if no quarantine probably we'll never do it this because i mean we're kind of busy i mean outside that yeah right so yeah. it's a bonus then so maybe not fuck 2020 it is, it is a bonus. <laughs> <laughs> you're the second some- person we you're the second person we talked to today that has said they've been like a extremely productive in the uh in, during the quarantine kelly from atheist yeah. was just telling us how how much he's gotten done in just this m- matter of time absolutely absolutely yes and and beside that i mean i mean the, the other band grieving age the doom death band we, we are already working on it at the moment and we're gonna release our uh, ep probably around uh, end of the year nice yes yeah looking forward to that then yeah, I can. I can. I mean, it's forward you the name. You can check it online. We have two albums. Uh, album. It's, it's the yeah, album been released in two thousand eight. Uh, it's it's been mixed and mastered by Don Suano, okay. um, and the artwork uh, done by uh, Aaron, the lead singer of My Dying Bride. Oh wow! Uh, yeah, it, it was it was a unique project, really. And the second album, um, it's been out two thousand thirteen, um, mixing and mastering done by uh, Victor Santura from the. Dark Fortress and Tripticon. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Where can Very we friends, I, he's friends yeah, with Aaron. I mean, he's been in the show with us a bunch of times. Yeah, really? Yeah, Aaron's a really good guy. In fact, one of, we did one of our better, I think one of the best episodes, right, Chris? Yeah, it's by far one of our biggest viewed episodes because it was That's great. It was one of his first, I think, was it, was it, was it one of his first for the record? After his daughter had, yeah, after his daughter, and it was right after his daughter had recovered as well. Yeah, that, that, that was bad. That was really bad. I mean, when I heard the news back, I mean, it was really devastating. Yeah. Yeah. But thank God that she, she really uh, passed this and she yeah. moved over. Yeah, yeah. he's a good guy. Big fan of the show, too. I like, we like him a lot. Hey, he's a legend. Come on. He's a legend. I mean, Aaron is a legend, guy, really. Yeah, I agree. Anything else, Chris? I, 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 I don't, man. Thank you so much for joining us today. Oh, I do have one other thing. Where can we find your band? Sorry? So, what's your website? 
Uh, we don't have a web sign. It's usually it's uh, Bandcamp. Um, um, I'll just forward you. I mean, uh, so it's Grieving Age. This is the, the first band, then this noise frequency. But, but, I but mean, this, is, of, this is for people listening, so they need to be able to go find it. Yeah, so it's, it, basically it's Bandcamp, if you want to say. Bandcamp, yes. You can find, so, find us in Bandcamp. So Death Noise Frequency at Bandcamp? Yes. All one word. Yeah, exactly. All yes. one word, correct. And you could find that, uh, the Mortician Dirge, at, uh, on YouTube as well. That's right, yes. Perfect. Rena, you got anything else? I just want to say thank you for, for um, shedding some light into the metal scene of the Middle East. That's super interesting. Yeah, yeah it's the first time we've talked to anybody from there, so it's kind of cool. I agree. Yeah, it's great. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. And we have some cool bands, but all of them are underground. But we have some really cool, cool bands here over here. Awesome. Yeah, hey, but I think the last time I've, I've been, had any information, do you know the band Akrasi Kauda? I think they were from Syria. What or the name? They had to go to Syria. And it was there was like a documentary on those guys, and they painted a really grim picture on the possibilities of metal. Mm. Like, yeah in your bark of the woods or your neck of the woods and uh, yeah the woods. <laughs> I'm like optimistic oh, sorry. it was tanner i blame tanner who was barking clear <laughs> 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 but yeah, it's yeah. Just, i think it's like um sort of it gives you hope to hear that there is a strong at least underground scene growing there yeah. because it's it's previous it's days we've talked about like the power of of unity that comes with metal and how it is like one big happy family just yes. all the country borders and so on so it's like I'm, I'm super happy to hear that the family is extending mm. yes well. that's been the theme yeah. all day pretty much we've been talking about that with everybody today mm. yeah awesome yeah chris we're good we're good man i'm mad thank you thank Take you so much. i really appreciate it that i really appreciate it hey stay safe and be well my friend you too, guys. Thank you so All much right. for this. Right up. Bye. Right. Thank bye. you. Bye. 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 So, Rena, that was my dog. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> as long as we have dogs barking. Tan yeah. That Tanner doesn't bark. Oh, well, my God. I have two of them in here. The little one barks. The big one, you'll know. I have a Great Dane in here. Oh, God. I love Great Danes. Yeah, she's big. She's like 150, but she's Ooh. pretty mellow right now. She's laying on the floor. It's this little shit dog, Abby, that's running around driving everybody nuts. <laughs> <laughs> I just We're wanted to know Abby. what I want to know is what the hell were you doing in that interview? You're like, oh, oh, I didn't hear it. I don't know. Oh, I, I didn't hear it yeah. either. <laughs> uh, I was like, what? Is he taking a dump? Is he masturbating? What the hell All is right, he doing so over here? <laughs> You have so, porn running in your other right. tab. <laughs> I got double screens here, yeah. So anyway, we're gonna we're gonna get uh unleash the archers here in a second. But Chris referred to it. Let us tell you the story. So one day you wanna tell it, Chris? What? Song gray? Oh god. <laughs> so we're it was when we first started doing the podcast, I think it was our second day ever. And we get this <laughs> band from California, they're um Hispanic metal band. And um so we phone, and he doesn't answer the first time. So we're like, okay, well, we're, we're kind of new to this. We don't know what we're doing. So we phone back, and he answers his phone, and he's sitting on the toilet taking a shit. But he's got his video on. And he's got his video on. <laughs> <laughs> and he's like, oh, hey, guys, uh, I'm just a bit busy. Can I call you back? And we're like... <laughs> That's Henry. Henry's great. I ended up hanging with him on the... Uh... 70,000 tons of metal this year. He's a great guy. Oh, yeah. Super nice. But I was just like, oh, my God. <laughs> he's, in another, he's in another band you may have heard of. Do you ever hear of Brugero? Brugero? No. No. They're, they're a Mexican, like, uh, I don't know, heavy rap metal band sort of thing. Not, oh, not, God, not, there's so many bands, you know? So many bands. Oh, yeah. Good stuff out there that I've never heard of. And, yeah, like, they're the Brugera thing is not my thing. It's too, uh, it's too much for me, but they do quite well. I mean, that was who he was on the boat with. And I went to see the show one night and it was just completely packed and people were digging him. Oh, Brujeria, you mean? Yeah. yeah. I don't know how to say it. Yep. Brujeria. Yes. Sorry. I didn't roll my R's, but you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> <laughs> I do. Yes, yes, yes. I know them. I know them. Yeah. Or their music. Yeah. The only thing <laughs> I'm rolling is my stomach after four beers. <laughs> 
That's right. Four. <laughs> <laughs> so you weren't you weren't aware of this, but Rena's rolling something else, waiting for this all to end. We yeah. talked about that earlier, <laughs> earlier too. Oh yeah, totally. <laughs> God, God bless the land where yeah. where you can do that. <laughs> Welcome back to my 120 seconds or less of Brutally Delicious. I'm Ashley, and today we are checking out Illusions of Grandeur out of Pennsylvania. Um, they are just a very unique band or unique sound to begin with. I was making a joke earlier <laughs> that IOG is some real OG shit. <laughs> Their front woman, Maggie, has an absolutely beautiful voice, like, literally like none other um first when you listen to them they kind of take on their own sound but with maybe like a hint of within temptation only because like you know the within temptation is if, uh, also a female driven band and but anyways that completely goes away as you continue to listen on to more songs like when i first listened to them i I think it was like two or three songs when I came into that Within Temptation conclusion. But say you, even even one more song, like Mayhem or Breathe, that influence totally goes away. And you can't find any band that they sound like. Or you find like too many bands. And it just, it doesn't make any sense. So they just, they, they really have their own sound. And after watching like some videos of their performances they just they they're a band that can own a stage while potentially you know falling or creating their own metal genre and i'm i don't know <laughs> if it's just because of her voice which i totally love that you know she she is the siren because you know that's what sirens are famous for <laughs> her voice is just like really captivating beautiful while still being, you know, like feminine, but it's strong. And she's surrounded by solid drums, a resonant guitarist, and a strong bassist, you know. Um, and IOG has a lot of accomplishments as well. They've shared the stage with artists like Dope, um, September Morning, New Year's Day, Puddle of Mud, and Otep. Um, also, the band's new single, um, Crossing Over, is coming out in a couple weeks on October 16th as part of their long-awaited album, The Siren, to be released worldwide in 2021. And, fun fact, you can head over to their Facebook to see some behind-the-scenes action for the new music video to go along with it as well. So, IOG can be found anywhere you want to go look for it, like Apple Music, which is my preference, or YouTube. So, go check them out, and we'll catch you next time. Ever wonder what a punch from Elton John feels like? Or how you cope with having turned down the chance to be in Nirvana? Or what signal Keith Richards gives when he wants you to get the hell out of his hotel room? Fans of Too Much Effing Perspective don't have to wonder, because they've heard these exact stories and a jillion others on our podcast. I'm Alex Hoffman, former tour manager for Radiohead. And I'm musician and comedy writer Alan Keller. On the TMEP show, we get guests like Nancy Wilson from Heart, Jeremiah Freights from the Lumineers, and Modern Family's Julie Bowen to tell us things they may have only shared with their therapist, clergy, or a TMZ stringer. So join us on Too Much Effing Perspective. That's E-F-F-I-N-G Perspective. The only podcast you crank up to 11. Oh.